Hey y'all, it's me. So, this video is all about the things that I'm going to take with me when I weigh in Friday at 5 after work. And then again on Saturday for a full day of lifting. I hope you enjoy. Please give me a like, comment, and subscribe. And let me know what your meat day essentials are. Hope you enjoy. So the stuff you need for weigh-ins is really pretty simple. Uh, most girls weigh in in a sports bra and underwear. So I decided that since it's super cute and it's new, I'd wear my exclusive Barbella Born Primitive Collaborative Sports Bra and the brand new Christmas Abbott Live Sore underwear that we got in June's box. So the bra was in May's box and the underwear was in June's box. And I think they're both still available on the website because how cute of a combo is that? Um, so that's what you actually need to weigh in, in, is a sports bra and underwear. And then I have my Federation card. I need that when I weigh in. Uh, you need a form of photo ID that isn't expired. So I'm bringing my passport this time because my license is expired and the DMV has not yet mailed me my photo card, so I can't get a new one. And then in this little black book, I have my attempt selection written down because you need to give them your first attempts for squat, bench, and dead. All three of those things fit inside my super cool brand new flag nor fail hip pack, fanny pack, whatever you want to call it. And over here, I have protein for after weigh-ins. So I've got an Isopure, a Fit Crunch, and a bag of Quest Protein Chips. The reason I'm picking those is because this is a weigh-in at Friday night at 5. So I'm going to do my best to not eat a lot during the day Friday, which means I'm really not going to have much protein, and my biggest meal is going to be carbs. We're going to Olive Garden so I can eat more breadsticks than any person ever should. So on the way home from weigh-ins, I'm going to drink some water, drink an ice up here, have a Fit Crunch, and have some Quest Chips, because that right there will almost, it'll get me close enough to my daily protein intake that I don't have to worry about it at dinner that night. So yeah, that's it. That's, that's all you need for a night before weigh-in. Snacks optional. So I'm going to start with everything just kind of laid out on the floor for you guys, and then I'll walk you through it all as I pack it as well. So things that you need that you have to have for a powerlifting meet. You have to have a singlet, and for most federations it has to be a non-supportive singlet. You also have to wear a t-shirt. So I have this super cute little Hulk shirt that Kirby got for me, and I use that while I'm lifting. I like the black on black look. I also pack my team t-shirt because we do take pictures as a team and I do want to represent my coach because without him I wouldn't really be quite as successful on meet day. Um, having a coach is a really big deal to me. I really do rely on him heavily come meet day to make my selections for me since I don't know what they are myself. But along with that, I do not wear squat shoes, so I have these really cool hand-painted custom chucks. Kirby got me these as well for my birthday. So I don't use squat shoes, so I will squat and bench in those. I use Asics wrestling shoes for deadlifts. Fun fact, I wear a kid size, which meant they were cheaper. Continuing the Hulk theme, for deadlift you have to wear knee-high socks. I tend to just wear mine all day, that way they're on and I don't have to think about it. Um, spandex shorts, pretty self-explanatory. You don't want to walk around in a singlet all day. Not the most comfortable thing. When you show up, most of us are wearing shorts, not our singlets. We'll change into our singlets. When you're done before awards, you're going to want to put on shorts. Um, also, I got underwear next to my shorts. Yeah, super cool, but most federations do kind of try and tell you what underwear you can and cannot wear. I know a lot of lifters don't listen to that, so technically mine are federation legal. I just like them because they're super silky, so they don't bunch up, they don't ride up, they're really comfy, they're really soft. They're, they're my meat day underwear. I have worn them in every meet I've been in since I got them. It's like 
a routine now. It's how it is with most of my gear. And then we get into like the practical stuff. So my uh, Mark Bell slingshot hip circle to get me warmed up for squats and deads, a lacrosse ball to do some trigger point, a resistance band to work on scapular retraction before I bench, my wrist straps, a headband to hold back my super long hair. I use a trigger point therapy grid foam roller, headphones, because I don't want to hear anyone's nonsense, including my own, and if you're a lady and you lift, and you're gonna deadlift heavy, I highly suggest keeping a set of panty liners in your bag. That way, you don't have to worry if you pee a bit. Have not peed a bit yet, but not taking the risk to be unprepared. And then in the back, you see my uh, six pack fitness duffel. I've been using this duffel for two years now, three years now. I only use it for meats. It's got chalk and baby powder in that side pocket. And in that side pocket, I stash all the snacks. And over top of it is my belt. All right, so the meat bag is empty. I'm gonna show you guys how I pack it. It's almost empty. I got some stuff in here from last week because I never cleaned it out. But I'm kinda gonna show you guys how I pack it and talk you through what kind of gear I have while I do that. Uh, what's already in here is some kinesiology tape. I keep that on me just in case I should do anything to my SI joint during competition and I want to get off the platform and tape it as soon as I'm done my third attempt deadlift. I do that. Um, I've got a letter from some friends. I've got a USAPL card, some pre-workout samples, all sorts of random stuff. But the first thing I always put in is my belt. It's big, it's bulky and it wraps around the outside. The only time this one really comes back to bite me in the tush is when they have to do an equipment check and I've got to dig through my whole bag to get my belt out. I know a lot of lifters will wrap it around their bag or just carry it in with them, but I don't mind digging. Next in is my foam roller. Again, it's big, it's bulky, and it takes up a lot of space in the bag and most things can be packed around it. What I do with the foam roller is I take my other three warm-up tools and I pack them inside the foam roller. So my belt is a tapered belt from Inzer. It is an extra small. I got it in October when I cut for nationals and it's finally starting to not bruise me. Um, I wear the tapered fit because I have long legs and a very short torso so the space between the bottom of my rib cage and my, the top of my frontal hip bone is only about that much. So if I wear a full width belt, it's really uncomfortable for me. It's either digging into and under my ribs or it's bruising the heck out of my hip bones or I can't get it tight enough around my waist. The taper fit is just a really good choice for me. So the lacrosse ball is from Dix, nothing special there. Um, I get all my bands off Elite FTS. I'll link everybody's, all of my equipment's websites down below in the description. And then the Mark Bell Slingshot Hip Circle all three of those go inside the trigger point foam roller. Next up that I pack are going to be my shoes. So my Asics wrestling shoes. I got these at Dick's on a Black Friday sale. That wasn't really that great of a deal because they're already not too expensive. And the hand painted chucks that Kirby got me, I actually put in a box because I'm always really worried that something's gonna happen to that hand painting. So I st stick those back in the box that they came in. There we go. And I put that in next. That also keeps them from getting too beat up or covered in chalk and baby powder or whatever else I have rolling around this bag. Next up is my singlet. I wear a Titan Triumph singlet. It is non-supportive, and I got the single, not double crotch. Uh, this one's a medium. It's actually a bit big on me. I'm probably going to get a small before nationals, just to make sure that it's giving me the best possible fit. Because I'm short and I'm in a low weight class, I can go a little lower on the sizing chart with the singlets than the weight says. 
So the medium is supposed to be 123 through like one or 125 through 140 something. I lift at the 125 weight class, but because I'm only this big, that's the legs on that are really long. So when I wear my knee sleeves, I've got to be really careful because in USAPL, your sleeves can't touch your singlet. But that's not this federation. I don't wear knee sleeves with this federation. The next thing I'm going to pack are my wrist straps. Those are Inzer as well. This is the first meet that I'm going to be doing using wrist straps. I added those into my training not too long ago. So those I'm just going to tuck down in the corner um, of my bag where my, next to where my belt is because the belt doesn't obviously hug the sides of the bag. So those fit really nicely in there. So I'm going to tuck them in there. Next thing is going to be my panty liners in case I have leakage issues. I'm going to tuck them in the opposite corner of the meat bag because not everybody needs to know they're there, although now everybody does. Um, next in is going to be my knee high socks, my little Hulk socks. They're going to get tucked in there. Um, I normally wear slides or flip flops, especially the summer meets because that way when the meat is done and those are covered in baby powder, chalk, and other various substances, I can just take them off and put them in this little sweat pouch here and not have to deal with them, not have to have gross feet all afternoon. So the next thing in is my team t-shirt. Gonna lay that right on top. And then my Beats. I use the Power Beats headphones. I got the Beats 2 because I'm not that fancy and I don't need 3. I'm going to put them in this top pocket so that I've got access to all of them. My ID, my membership card, and my attempts will also all go in this top pocket come the day of the meet, as well as chapstick and mascara and anything else I might need, makeup wipe, makeup remover, baby wipes, things like that. The only other thing that I do always bring to meets is I bring two extra pairs of socks. So part of that is your socks have to be a certain height. And I'm a little bit worried always, especially with the Hulk socks, that they're going to tell me my socks aren't high enough. So when I wear these sleeves in USAPL, it's not a big issue because your socks can't touch your sleeves. So having socks that are a little shorter is actually better. And this federation, because I don't wear knee sleeves, I might need higher socks. So I'm packing my Barbell Babe socks from Socksbox. Those are my backup socks. And I also always pack an extra pair of socks that's just nondescript knee-high socks. These ones have polka dots on them. In case someone on my team or another girl in the meet forgets socks. Um, it happens more often than you'd think. And seeing that I've done a lot of these meets, I always feel good when I pack extra stuff. And someone, I don't feel good that they forget it, but I feel good being an experienced lifter and packing so that I'm in a position to help newer lifters. Yeah, that's everything all in here. Zip it up. Still tons of room. Um, in this side pocket, I have my chalk and my baby powder, and they never leave there. They are both in their own plastic bags, and they stay in this pocket, and they only come out at meets, because otherwise, they make a mess. So yeah, that's it. Um, I'll post a still picture on IG about my snacks. But really this meat, I'm not planning on taking crazy snacks or anything like that. Um, my mom got me fruit snacks. I just came from her house. So yeah, she got me some fruit snacks and some little bites. So I'll probably throw those in. And then other than that, I'll probably do like a peanut butter sandwich and a protein bar. Um, I've obviously got to pack enough food that I'm not going to be hungry halfway through the day. But... At the same time, I've come a long way since when I packed my meat bag, all the exciting stuff was in this side. I used to pack Cheez-Its and Pop-Tarts and all this junk and just like dried fruit and sugar like you wouldn't believe because I had done such really difficult cuts that, oh, Oreos, I always had Oreos, um, but I had done such difficult cuts that by the time I got to the meat, I was just so focused on eating food that I hadn't been able to have for the past 8, 12, 16 weeks. Um, so knowing that I'm at a spot right now where it's like, yeah, whatever gets thrown in that side pocket gets thrown in that side pocket, I don't really, I don't really care. It's not like of emotional attachment to me. It's a really cool spot for me to be in as a lifter, knowing that my body's not craving anything, but I'm treating it better. 
So yeah, that's my meat bag. All packed, ready to go. I always like to pack it a day or two ahead of time so that Saturday morning when I wake up, I don't have to worry about anything. What I do with the clothes I'm gonna wear, so I've got my Hulk t-shirt, my Nike Pros, my Barbella sports bra, my underwear, and my headband. The headband I'll tuck in here, but everything else, I slip right under there. So I wake up in the morning and seriously everything I need for that day is already going to be in here. When I get home Friday, my wallet's going to go in here, a cell phone charger is going to go in here, the camera bag is probably going to go next to here, and I'm not going to have to think about anything Saturday morning when I wake up, which is the ultimate goal because most of the time you have to be at the venue anywhere between 6.30 and 8 a.m. So if you have to drive a far way, that makes it really tough. Um, this one, since I'm weighing in ahead of time, I'm just going to get there at 8 a.m. for rules clinic and warm-ups. Um, but still, 8 a.m. when you live half an hour, 45 minutes away from the venue, you still got to wake up at like 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning. And on meet day, I'm not about that life. I want to get as much sleep as possible these next two days. So yeah.